what about these antics that he got up to? What, what about the famous love-in with Yoko Ono? Did you talk to him about that? I certainly did. I just found him, telephoned him, and I said, that's enough. Thank you, we've had enough. Keep that lock for the music hall. <laughs> and that was the end of it. So he listened to you then? <coughs> well, although he rebelled and said, I'm not, young, I'm not going to do as you tell me, but he always did. <laughs> what did you make of his wife, Yoko Ono? Did you ever meet her? Oh, yes, I met her. I've met her in London. And I've met her once down here. That was in the early days when he brought her. Hmm. Well, I didn't know what it was all about. I wondered who he was, who it was. And I said, who's this? And he pushed his head, it's Yoko. <laughs> but I didn't think any of it, you know. But I did say, what do you do for a living <laughs> to her? She said, I'm an artist. I said, that's very funny. I've never heard of you. <laughs> Mimi Smith raised John Lennon from age six. She and her husband had no children, and Lennon's mother abandoned him. Mimi was a huge part of John's life. She read with him as a child, had a personal library, and introduced John to literature that was influential to him, such as Lewis Carroll and Dylan Thomas. She encouraged John to finish his education and go to art college, and she indulged his music passion, his friends and girlfriends that she didn't particularly approve of. She had a strong sense of right and wrong. In the aftermath of John Lennon's divorce from Cynthia and his journey through drug addiction, avant-garde art, and the anti-war movement, Smith was noted as making several remarks that implied disdain for Ono. In an interview with Aunt Mimi Smith from 1970, when asked what she believed changed John so dramatically from his carefree childhood years, Mimi responded, She's responsible for all this, Yoko. She changed him, and I'm sure she and Linda are behind the split between John and Paul. Cynthia was such a nice girl. When she and John were in art college, she'd come to my house and say, Oh, Mimi, what am I going to do about John? She'd sit there until he came home. Cynthia really pursued him. He'd walk up the road and back until she got tired of waiting and went home. I think he was afraid of her, actually. The interviewer questioned her whether she realized that, for example, John is seen by many as a political leader who uses catchy songs to give the people power. She replied, Don't talk to me about such things. I know that boy. He doesn't know what he's saying. It's all an act. If there were a revolution, John would be the first in the queue to run. Why, he's scared to death of things like that. That's Yoko talking, not John. Yoko is not exactly right in the head. Every time John does something bad and gets his picture in the papers, he rings up to smooth me over. See that new color television? It was a Christmas present, but he had it delivered early. A big present arrives every time he's been naughty. I usually have a huge photograph of John hanging in the lounge. When he's a good boy, it'll go back up again. When the Beatles hit it big in 1965, John bought her a bungalow in Poole, Dorset, where she lived until her death in 1991. After Lennon's death, Mimi was furious to find out that he had never transferred the ownership of the house over to her even though John bought it as a family house for all the Stanleys to use as a holiday stay, which meant that Ono owned the house and could sell it at any time. When John's sister Julia Baird visited Mimi in the 1980s, all of Julian's pictures were missing and there were just pictures of Sean. Mimi looked afraid when asked why, but all she could say was that she never knew when she would get the visit. Yoko Ono put Aunt Mimi Smith's house up for sale on the same day as Mimi's cremation, ignoring Mimi's wishes that her home go to the family. In 1994, the new owner tore the house down to build a new luxury home. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> that was Ringo, folks. <laughs> well, what can I say? And goodbye you to know. all of them. <laughs> Well, this is Ringo. Everyone seems to have said everything here, so I'll just sign off by saying cheerio and best of luck from the Beatles. <laughs>